Today we start our first module particle properties of waves. So we know the properties of a particle. A particle has got properties like mass, charge etc. And a wave has got properties like wavelength, frequency etc. So suppose we drop a stone into the lake, stone as a particle and we know that there will be ripples formed. The ripples formed as a wave. The stone and the ripples formed has only some common properties like ability to transfer energy and momentum. Stone has got mass velocity etc and the ripples will have a wavelength frequency etc the common properties are the ability to transfer energy and momentum only so in the classical physics which is the physics of the macroscopic world uh, mechanics of particles and optics of waves are completely different disciplines. The branch of physics dealing with the study of uh, the movement of particles is mechanics and um, the branch of physics dealing with the behavior of the waves is optics. They are entirely different in the classical physics or in the macroscopic world. But when we go to the microscopic world, we can see that uh, for example, in the realm of atoms, for example, we are taking electrons. Um, so, we treat the electrons as particles because they have mass, charge and they obey uh, the laws of particle mechanics in television picture tubes, etc. But uh, in order to explain the behavior of electrons in electron microscope, we have to treat them as waves so in the microscopic world the, uh, the microscopic particles uh, have got both uh, the particle and wave nature so if you are going to the electromagnetic waves or radiations so we know that waves electromagnetic waves we regard electromagnetic waves as waves because they exhibit diffraction, polarization, interference, etc. But in order to explain some other properties of electromagnetic waves such as photoelectric effect, Compton effect, we need the particle behavior. So we know that. So from this we can infer that wave particle duality is a major concept in modern physics. So in this chapter, uh, we are studying the particle properties of the waves. So before going to this, we will study about the electromagnetic waves. So how they are generated, what are their properties. So we know that a stationary charge will produce an electric field around it. So you have already learned this in the electrostatic course. So, suppose the charge is moving but a constant velocity. What will happen? So, a charge moving with constant velocity is equivalent to a steady current. So, the steady current produces the magnetostatic field. So, what will happen if the charge is moving with an acceleration? So, charge moving with acceleration will produce a varying current. As the velocity changes, uh, the current also changes and there will be a varying current. And this varying current will produce a varying magnetic field. And according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, there will be an electric field associated with it. So, a charge moving with acceleration produces uh, linked electric and magnetic disturbances. So, this was proposed by Maxwell in 1864. And according to him, uh, 
the charge moving with acceleration produces electric and magnetic disturbances so when uh, the charge is oscillating periodically then we have uh, electric and magnetic disturbances propagating in a periodic nature so we will get an electromagnetic wave so uh, the source of the electromagnetic wave is a charge which is oscillating periodically uh, so how maxwell proposed this so from the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction maxwell uh, knew that uh, the change in magnetic field produces an electric field so whenever the magnetic field linked with a coil changes there will be an emf induced this is already known before maxwell so Maxwell proposed that the converse of this statement is also true. That means a change in electric field will induce a magnetic field. So this was just an hypothesis uh, uh, that was not based on the experimental findings because uh, the electric field uh, induced by a changing magnetic field is easy to detect. But the magnetic field produced by a change in electric field is not uh, easy to detect. Uh, this we, it is very difficult to measure small magnetic fields, and therefore this is easy to detect at that time. And uh, it was a hypothesis at uh, at that time. So uh, Maxwell uh, proposed that the converse of the statement is also true. A change in electric field should induce a magnetic field. So he deduced the theory and uh, he found that uh, uh, if her statement, his hypothesis is true, the electric ma uh, electromagnetic waves should have a velocity v is equal to 1 by root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So this equation, the derivation of this equation um, you, um, will be there in your electrodynamics 2 course. So we are not going to do the derivation. You will study this derivation in electrodynamics 2. So he found that whenever mu 0 is the permeability of free space and epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space. And when substituting those values, uh, he found that this velocity is equal, approximately equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second, which is equal to the velocity of light. So from this, Maxwell deduced that light is nothing but an electromagnetic wave. But Maxwell's uh, prediction was not experimentally verified during his lifetime. But later in 1988, a German physicist Henry Hertz experimentally verified the existence of electromagnetic waves. So, he generated the electromagnetic waves by applying an alternating current to an air gap between two metal balls. The width of the gap was such that a spark occurred each time when the current reached a peak. A wire loop with a small gap was the detector. The electromagnetic waves set up oscillations in the loop that pro produced spark in the gap. So, a DC current is applied over here. This is converted to AC. This is applied over here. And the width of the gap is such that it generates a spark. So, uh, and this is detected with the help of a detector or receiver. So, the electromagnetic waves are generated over here and detected here. And Hertz determined the wavelength and the speed of these electromagnetic waves.
and it is he found that it is in accordance with the maxwell's hypothesis and he showed that this electromagnetic waves has has got both electric and magnetic field components and they exhibit wave properties like a reflection a refraction and diffraction so hertz experimentally verified the uh, nature of the electromagnetic waves also he produced the electromagnetic waves in the setup so the maxwell hypothesis will uh, hypothesis became a theory it, it was experimentally uh, verified by hertz in 1988 so hertz uh, verified that the maxwell's notion is true that is uh, according to maxwell whenever a charge oscillates there will be electric and magnetic fields which are perpendicular to each other and both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation electric field and magnetic field both are perpendicular to each other and uh, the wave propagates in a direction perpendicular to both electric and magnetic fields so this was there in the maxwell's hypothesis and hertz experimentally verified this so light is not the only one electromagnetic wave there are other electromagnetic waves uh, ranging from uh, radio waves to gamma rays so this which is called this arrangement is called the electromagnetic spectrum so all this means here will have this uh, same velocity in free space which is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second and all have electric and magnetic field components which are coupled by the Uh, faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and the converse mechanism proposed by maxwell so when the charge oscillates what will happen the charge uh, produces a varying magnetic field according to this faraday's law of electromagnetic induction there will be an electric field induced the electric field also changes this change in electric field will produce a magnetic field uh, according to the converse mechanism proposed by maxwell so we have linked electric and magnetic field disturbances traveling perpendicular to each other they are coupled in the electromagnetic wave so on the spectrum uh, we have a uh, various um, waves uh, arranged in the increasing or decreasing order of frequency so we have the low frequency Uh, radio waves and the high frequency gamma rays or uh, low wavelength uh, low wavelength gamma rays and uh, high wavelength uh, radio waves so uh, out of this we can only see the visible region which has a wavelength from 400 to 700 nanometers and we have a uh, radio waves uh, microwaves infrared visible uv x ray and gamma ray in the increasing order of frequency so all these waves has uh, have got the same properties the same velocity but they have different frequency different wavelength different energy etc okay 